Hello, my name is Lucas Peed, and I'll be talking a little bit today about Puritanism and the founding of America, and answering the question, what is the importance and influence of Puritanism in the founding of America? But before I get into all that, it's important to note that America and its founding was influenced by many different things. And if you were to ask someone what are some of the con main contributing factors to the founding of America, you're probably going to get answers such as the governments of antiquity, uh, enlightenment thinkers, and maybe just the colonial experience, what the colonists had already been through. But an answer you're probably not going to get is Puritanism. And when you look at the core values and ideals of America, and especially at its founding, you'll see a lot of the same root ideas of Puritanism, um, a lot of their same ideals. And probably the most prevalent one that you see is Republicanism, or just having a body that rules itself, it's guided by elected officials. And you can see this in America, even before the Puritans. If you go to uh, Colonial National Park and you go to the Jamestown unit, you'll listen to their park film and they're going to tell you that the Jamestown settlement had a representative form of government two years before uh, Plymouth. And although that's true, where the Founding Fathers really looked at, um, I believe, to get the idea of Republicanism was the Puritan churches. And one thing about this instead of Jamestown is that so many people were religious. You had so many people coming into New England that a lot of people were already open to this idea of having a self-ruling body and um, electing officials. And um, Sanford Kessler he notes in his article, Toxel's Puritans, uh, Christianity and American Founding, that Alexis de Tocqueville believed that the Constitution and American form of government worked because the Puritans made a critical mass of American self-governing and um, had an air of public spirit before the Constitution was even written. So they were already open to these ideas. Um, and while that's one of the more prominent influences of Puritanism, there are many others. And one of the other ones that you see in government is civil rights, um, civil liberties. And you see that especially in our Bill of Rights. And while that was influenced by the Magna Carta, the English Bill of Rights, a lot of it also comes out of the civil covenants that were so prevalent in the Puritan settlements, um, in the whole um, Puritan experiment. And these were covenants um, sometimes between the church and uh, maybe the pastors and the ruling, or not ruling, but the um, elected officials. But also they were more commonly seen as between God and the people, the Puritans, because they saw themselves as very special, unique. Um, God was ordaining everything they did. And, um, they were almost like the Jews in a sense. They were chosen. Um, but that kind of carries over to more civil matters, and it was the core of their society. And it's probably seen most in the Massachusetts Body of Liberties. Uh, this document has been considered the first modern Bill of Rights, and a lot of what you see in the American Bill of Rights um, can be linked back to that. And John Witt, he notes in his article, uh, New Magna Carta for the Early Modern Law, uh, that the founder of Providence Plantation, Roger Williams, stated that civil covenants, such as the Massachusetts Body of Liberties, protected liberties of conscience and the free exercise and enjoyment of civil and religious rights. So a lot of that's coming directly out of the Puritan um, beliefs and ideals. And again, people are used to that because they've been worshiping in this. And so when it gets transferred over into a political realm, then it's not that far of a stretch. They're used to it already. But to have a republic where the people are governing and um, have the power, that people obviously needs to be educated. And thankfully, the Puritans had already set a precedent for that as well. Um, they were the first ones to um, really push school and require school. They set up a lot of the first schools and universities. And through even the mid to late 19th century, most educational programs that you see, they're going to have a Puritan influence, kind of the Puritan structure of education. And more than anything, um, you see this through all the things I've already discussed, but just the idea of liberty and freedom. Uh, the church um, was kind of getting away from established churches and um, they're getting more to having that religious freedom. You weren't governed by an Anglican church, not a pope, something like that. 
And so when the revolution was nearing, people started seeing um, political freedom as well. And the religious freedom and political freedom went hand in hand. And they kind of joined forces almost. And together they created a, a fervor, a, a kind of sparked a fire in the colonists, which ultimately culminated in the American Revolution and helped lead to the actual founding of America. So these are just a few of the ones, the more prevalent ones. But there's really so many aspects of Puritan culture and ideals that you will you can see in American culture today and um, government today more than anything. And although the religious side might be lost, those ideals, the practices that they started so long ago, uh, still stand as a testament of them through our government and the founding of America today.